I'm Capitol Hill correspondent Nancy Cordes, and this is Washington Unplugged. Earlier today, we spoke to Democratic Congressman Jared Polis. He's one of three openly gay members of Congress, and he has been critical of the Obama administration's decision to defend the Defense of Marriage Act in a recent court filing. We asked the congressman what his reaction was to the president's signing of a memorandum that offers some benefits to same-sex partners of federal employees. Well, again, it's a small, small step in the right direction. I mean, it's not a tangible step. Uh, gay and lesbian uh, federal employees still don't have health care benefits, retirement benefits, most of what people think about when they think about benefits. Certainly, symbolically, it's good. And again, I was pleased that he renewed his call to repeal DOMA. Uh, and I'd like to see some follow through on that because it's becoming even more critical uh, as more and more states make the decision to allow same-sex couples to marry. I think that the president uh, can and should do more and, and use some political capital to show a place of moral leadership to say, you know, this country stands for equality. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white, a man or a woman, gay or straight. Uh, you deserve the same rights in this country. Uh, and, and I think that we need to move in that direction. Uh, the announcement yesterday was a small first step, uh, but we need to act soon to repeal DOMA and to allow gays and lesbians to serve in the military. There has been a lot of criticism from the gay community to this defense of marriage court filing, and we'll speak to one of those critics shortly. But we also asked Congressman Paulus what his reaction is to the critics. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. Uh, there's going to be people on across the spectrum in any movement. And I frankly, I understand why some people felt insulted by uh, the memorandum defending Defense of Marriage Act. And if they choose not to give, uh, either temporarily or permanently, that's their decision. Uh, I certainly continue to be a strong supporter of the president and of the Democratic Party. And I'm confident he's going to get this one right. Uh, and, and uh, you know, this might have been a little bit of a wake up call uh, that he can't take the uh, lesbian and gay community for granted. I'm joined now by John Aravosis, who's blogging about Obama's actions this week, caused quite a firestorm. John, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you said this week that you felt stabbed in the back. Why? You know, because what has happened with this president is not just that he hasn't taken any significant action on any of his eight promises to the gay community, you know, which is to be expected. We've only been six months into the presidency. I can accept that. But to have him affirmatively take steps that harm the gay community that is a betrayal to a core constituency of the Democratic Party. Let what, me just stop you right there. Yeah. Why do you believe that this harms the gay community? Well, what's happened, two main things. One, we've had 253 additional discharges under Don't Ask, Don't Tell since President Obama took office. He can't personally repeal the policy, that's up to Congress, but he could institute a stop loss policy which basically stops the discharges from happening, doesn't exonerate the soldiers, so he's not taking a position on that, but just stops the discharges until he can get to review the policy. He won't do it. On DOMA, the, the Defense of Marriage Act, the law that bans benefits for gay marriage and some other things, he can't repeal the law personally. But he went to court last week and actually defended the law in court when he personally has called for the repeal of the law and has called it abhorrent. He did not have to defend it, but he did. But when it comes to the steps he took this week, uh, they're unquestionably a step forward. They're not a step backwards. And he said publicly he wants to do more. Why isn't that a good sign? Well, there's two things, I guess. One, uh, the president signed a memorandum last night that will, it won't give benefits because the benefits already exist. The agencies can already give uh, gay employees these benefits, but it will require them to give them if the employees ask for them. That's a very nice step. A lot of gay people I talk to feel like it's a step from the 19 hunt for the 1990s, meaning today's issues that the gay community cares about are Obama's campaign promises. Gay marriage, the Defense of Marriage Act, don't ask, don't tell, job discrimination. He has promised to affirmatively act on those issues, but he hasn't. What he did last night is he reiterated his campaign position that he uh, supports those laws being overturned, but he no longer is promising to act to do it, to help it happen. And that concerns us. Now you're calling for a boycott of a Democratic National Committee event that's coming up. Are you concerned that moves like this might antagonize the very people that you need on your side no. to make more change happen? Oh, no, absolutely not. Uh, the community is at the point now where they feel like the Democratic Party has turned their back on them. Gay people in this country feel as though the Democrats and President Obama literally 
literally feel as if gays are some kind of political pariah that they shouldn't touch. So the only alternative people have is to fight back, to punish the party, take away gay money, which frankly is what gay people offer the most. We, we tend, or certain of our people tend to have a lot of money that donate to the Democratic Party. We vote 70% for Democrats. And if we punish the party enough, they'll pay enough of a price that, they, that they'll actually uh, change their policy. Other communities do it. Look at the NRA with the Republicans. The gun people, you vote against them, they take you down. And the Republicans therefore listen to them. Are you now looking to Republicans for leadership on this issue? Uh, I'll look to anybody for leadership on this issue. We would like both parties to be more supportive of civil rights. Interestingly enough, Arnold Schwarzenegger in California, Republican governor, said that he would not defend an anti-gay law in that state in court. He said that today. President Obama, on the other hand, is defending anti-gay laws in court. And, you know, it's something we would expect from the Bush administration, but not from the Obama administration. I know that the Obama administration has been engaged in discussions with leaders in the lesbian, gay, bisexual community. What kinds of things have they said about actions that they plan to take or not to take <laughs> when it comes to, say, don't ask, don't tell? Uh, they haven't said anything. What, what they've pretty much said is, trust us, we'll get to it eventually. And the problem with that is, I've worked in politics for 20 years. You don't just say, next year I'm going to get to a major policy like repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. You actually have to set the policy, uh, excuse me, the strategy down now so that we wouldn't say it publicly, but privately you and I would talk and we'd say, hey, you know, we need to hold some press conferences. We need to get some of these soldiers out there telling their story, how patriotic they are. We need to promote the polls more that show the American people are supportive. You don't just wait a year to do the policy. That was Bill Clinton's problem, so to speak. Uh, don't Ask, Don't Tell came in one fell swoop. He wasn't prepared for it and he lost. So you don't just postpone it for a year. You explain to us what the plan is over the next year to make it happen. They have never enunciated a plan even privately to us. And everyone says the president gets the most done during those first 100 days, and I believe we're Absolutely. now on uh, day 150 or well, 151. Or, for, for, or something first like year, that. I would say. The next three years are election years. Next year is congressional election. Year after that, we start the Democratic presidential primaries. Year after that, presidential election and Democratic, uh, excuse me, congressional election. These guys aren't going to do anything they consider controversial in three years. What they're going to do is this year, all the tough stuff. If they don't do it this year, I don't think they're ever going to do it. And the president's actions last week suggest to a lot of people that that's exactly what's happening. Well, we shall see. Washington-based activist John Aravosis, thank you so much for coming on Washington Unplugged to talk about this. Thank you. Uh, we're going to switch topics now because last night, hundreds of people converged on Union Square in New York City to demonstrate for Iranian opposition leader Mousavi. Take a look. This is what democracy looks like. 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 No more killing. No more torture. No more killing. No more torture. The dam is leaking in Iran, and they're on the verge of a huge moment in that country's history. They're on the verge of a democratic and free government. What do we want our votes? When do we want it now? What do we want our votes? When do we want it now? It's hard to decide whether America and Europe and other nations should interfere with this because then the Iranian government can use it against um, them. What would be more important is Iran's allies, Venezuela, Cuba, China. These countries should really put pressure. Russia. I mean, America and Europe can only do so much, but these other countries really should put pressure because they count for Iran.